Well, good morning and welcome to the talk uh, this morning. And uh, if you've got a Bible in front of you, do turn up to the end of Matthew chapter 28 and those final few verses where Jesus gives this commission to his disciples before he ascends into heaven. As we look at that passage this morning, I'd like to ask a question. What is the mission of the church? What is the mission of the church? What is the task that God has given us together and as individuals to be getting on with as we wait for Jesus' return? Now the Bible contains lots of commands, lots of things that we are to be involved in. But I believe that central to it is this great commission that Jesus gives before he ascends into heaven. And it's that great commission that I would like us to look at this morning. Now the context of this passage is one we will be aware of from last week. Uh, Jesus has risen again. Uh, Jesus met with those two women uh, on their way back from the tomb. He has shown himself to be alive. He says, tell the disciples to go ahead to Galilee and wait for me there. A little while later, the 11 disciples gather uh, at this mountain site in Galilee. And we're told, verse 17, that there is still some doubt as well as worship going on. The word doubt here has that sense of hesitation. Now, in one sense, you can humanly understand that, that sense of, is this really true? Has Jesus risen from the dead? Those thoughts no doubt going through the disciples' mind. But the risen Jesus then gives them a very clear commission a very clear plan of what he wants them to be getting on with. And I believe we start to see that plan being worked out as we read through the book of Acts. Let me read it again. Jesus says, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. There are lots of different things here. So let's break it down and just walk through that together. Firstly, as Jesus says that we're to go and make disciples. Our mission as a church is to make disciples. That's worth asking, what's a disciple? Well, on one simple level, a disciple is a follower of Jesus Christ. It is a person who's repented, said sorry for their sin, and turned and believed in Jesus for forgiveness, for adoption into his family, and a person who therefore has the hope of resurrection life. As you read Matthew's Gospel, we realise uh, that being a disciple is not a half-hearted thing. Jesus is asking for everything. Let me read what Jesus says about being a disciple. Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. Jesus is saying that if we are a disciple, if we're committed to following him, we need to follow in his footsteps. Take up our cross, means it will not always be easy, there will be tough times to follow him. But in doing so, what are we going to do? We're going to save our lives because we will have forgiveness, adoption and eternal life. So Jesus is calling us to make followers of his. And therefore notice what he's not calling us to make. He's not calling us to make religious churchgoers. Jesus isn't very interested in that. And as you read through Matthew's Gospel, you'll see that Jesus had very little time for religiosity behaviour. And we see that time after time with the Pharisees. Jesus is not looking for people who keep religious externals. He's looking for people who are wholeheartedly committed to following So that, therefore, is our mission as a church, to go out and make disciples, those who are committed to following Jesus. Our mission statement here at St Matthews over many years has been helping local people follow Jesus Christ. And I think that is a fantastic summary of what this Great Commission is calling us to do. Our task as a church is to help local people follow Jesus 
Christ. Become one of his disciples. And therefore the question I want us to ask about everything we do at St Matthew's is, is it helping to make disciples? One of the tasks I'm getting on with during this lockdown is beginning to prepare some bids for funding for our new pioneer families and community worker. It's quite an exciting thing to be involved in. And uh, one of the first trust funds I've been applying for this week uh, has this as their sort of criteria for funding. They're looking to fund projects that primarily and explicitly promote the Christian faith, that lead to tangible progress and growth in people's faith journey, and that lead directly to church growth. Now, I think that is a fantastic aim to have, completely in line with our Great Commission. But as I draft the job spec for this families and community worker, we need to demonstrate that they will be involved in this work of the Great Commission, that the work they will do will help local people follow Jesus. So the question is, will running a holiday club help local people follow Jesus? Will running an after-school club help local people follow Jesus? Will new all-age services help local people follow Jesus? And we need to show that, and that's the task we need to be committed to. And that clearly is a task for us together as a church family, but it's also a task for each of us as individuals. How can each of us help our local friends or family or colleagues follow Jesus? How can we introduce them to Jesus Christ? And I hope that little film from the Evangelical Alliance was helpful in getting you to think through uh, some of those issues. And thinking through, what could you do to help a local person follow Jesus? It's one of the areas I want to help equip you uh, to be able to do that. Some of you may have spotted at church our new uh, banner for the Engage course. This is one of the course handbooks that we've had printed. It's a short three-week course uh, that I've written, uh, particularly, hopefully, with St Leonard's and Hastings in mind, so that people can explore who Jesus is. Still very much in trial mode. This is sort of version number one, and as we do it with more people, uh, we'll no doubt tweak it so it can serve the best our church family here at St Matthew's and hopefully down in time at St Ethelburgus. Uh, at the heart of this course is three sessions. Firstly, who is Jesus? Secondly, why did he come? And third, what does it mean to follow him? And my hope is it will be an informal chance for people to be able to find out more about Jesus. And I'm really keen that it's really flexible. I don't think people are willing to commit to long courses in the way they possibly were 10 to 15 years ago. And it needs to be something that we can do uh, in different places. So yes, we may run it upstairs in the tower room. It's that room uh, upstairs in the church centre. We've got some nice new sofas there. We could do that for three evenings or three mornings. But I also wanted something that I can run in my home, that you could run in your home, that we can do in a cafe, that we can do in the pub, and that can work with people of different ages and be flexibly adapted. It needs a bit more work, uh, but we're trialling it. And so if you know people who you think might be interested in finding out more about Jesus, do let me know. Tracy and I would love to meet up with anyone if you think that would be helpful to explore who Jesus is, to give them a chance to follow Jesus Christ, to become one of his disciples. The task of the Great Commission is to go and make disciples. It is about helping local people follow Jesus. And it's one we need to be, remain committed to as a church, together, as a whole, as individuals. So let me just ask, how can you help someone become one of Jesus' disciples, particularly during this lockdown period? But Jesus' commission doesn't stop there. He continues, what does he say? Verse 28, we are called to make disciples of all nations. Uh, when we looked at our diocesan vision back in January, um, we were reminded of the diocese's vision uh, that all local churches should reflect their community. And therefore, our prayer and longing should be that St Matthew's reflects Silver Hill uh, in age and in demographics and background. So therefore, we need to ask the question, do our church activities help us reach everyone? Do they help every local person follow Jesus Christ? 
Now I have no doubt there's some groups who we're not reaching. And there's some groups I'm hoping this community, uh, families and community worker will help us reach. But are you aware of people that we're not reaching? Maybe drop me an email, say, I think we need to think about these people. Yeah, we need to be honest. Our resources are limited, we can't do everything at once. But we need to keep all these groups of people in mind. You know, is there more we could do particularly maybe to reach the elderly? Or to reach those with disabilities? Or could we do more to reach people in their 20s, teenagers, young families? People from different faith backgrounds? So they can become followers of Jesus Christ. But we're not just being called to make disciples in Silver Hill. Ultimately being called to make disciples of all nations. And notice the logic here of what Jesus says. All authority on heaven and on earth has been given to him. He is king of the whole world. And therefore he has authority to call the church to make disciples of the whole world. And that is what Jesus is calling us to do. So we as a church need to be committed to our worldwide mission. To sending money and people uh, to enable disciples to be made of every nation on this earth. And I want us to do that a little bit with the work we do uh, in Rwanda and it, through the work of Tear Fund. But maybe there's more we could do here. Here's a really bold thing. Could we, over the next five to ten years, be a church that sends people to the nations? Could we be a church that could look back at ten years and think we have sent people out into our world to make disciples of all nations? My previous church, we had a lady in her 50s who, once her children left home, decided to head out to Italy to go and make disciples in Bologna. It was a wonderful encouragement. She used to come back and tell us the stories of how she was helping a small little church in Bologna uh, make disciples of Italians. Uh, she told stories of how they bought an old dairy uh, factory in Bologna, turned it into a church, how she ran after school clubs, making disciples and followers of Jesus Christ. Jesus is clear we're to make disciples of all nations. Jesus is also clear that we are to baptise. Baptism, of course, is an outward sign of our profession of following Jesus Christ. And notice that our baptism is to be in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. That Trinitarian reference there. So if you're a follower of Jesus Christ and not being baptised, can I encourage you to come and get baptised? I've been approached by a couple of people in the last few months who would like to get baptised uh, across the life of our two churches and I'm hoping at some point we will have the chance to be able to do that either in church or down on the seafront. So if you're here today and maybe you were baptised as a child but never had the chance to publicly profess your faith then can I ask you to maybe consider being confirmed. The chance to confirm uh, those promises that were made when you were baptised earlier in your life. I know at least two people at St Matthews who've asked to be confirmed, and I've no doubt there's more. And as soon as a new Bishop of Lewis is appointed, I'm hoping we're going to get a confirmation service in the diary. Go and make that with disciples. And we are to do that of every nation, and we are to baptise. But Jesus' Great Commission does not stop there. And what does he say? Now have a look with me at verse 20. And teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Jesus says that our mission as a church, right at the heart of it, must be a ministry of teaching. And what are we to teach? Everything Jesus commanded. Which I take it means we are to teach the Word of God. We are to teach the Bible. Our Bible teaching must be central to our life as a church. If we're to help local people follow Jesus Christ, it must be centred on faithful Bible teaching. Now there's lots of things I'd just like to observe here. Firstly, it's a ministry of teaching. There is a bit of a trend, I think, in some church circles to say, we just gather in a room and we reflect together on a passage. 
Yes, but my fear of that is it's a bit of the blind leading the blind. And that's not what Jesus is called for. He's called for people to be taught. He's calling for people who don't know anything about Jesus Christ to be taught so they might become his disciples. It is a ministry of teaching. And notice it's not just a ministry of teaching for the sake of teaching. Teaching them to obey everything Jesus has commanded. It is teaching to call people to the obedience that comes from faith in Jesus Christ. Our obedience never earns us our forgiveness. It is a response to all Jesus has done. So my job on a Sunday and throughout the week as we teach the scriptures is to be sure that we're calling people to obedience. Of course, as I'm not here to be a, a newspaper columnist, what you get on a Sunday shouldn't be what you get in the Daily Mail or the Guardian. Actually, I want to call you to hear what God is saying in the Bible and to be obedient to it. And what that looks like will be shaped by and defined by the passage we're teaching. Sometimes being obedient just means living a life of worship. Sometimes it will call us to very specific actions to honour God. And finally, notice that we are called to teach everything that Jesus has commanded. And therefore it's important that over the course of a life of a church, uh, year in, year out, that we teach the whole of the Bible. We want to teach the Old Testament and the New Testament. We want to teach Gospels. We want to teach Epistles. We want to teach Old Testament prophecy. We want to teach the wisdom literature. We want to teach the Psalms. We want to teach the whole of the Bible. I'm keeping a very careful track of everything I teach so that I can look back in a few years' time to check that I'm not selling you short by missing bits out. One of the things that St Matthews has a long history of is expository Bible teaching. And I think that is really important. And it's one thing that I'm committed to continuing. Expository Bible teaching means it's a conviction that on one level I've got nothing worth saying. But I believe God does. As we understand the scriptures, as we understand the Bible, then God speaks to us. And the dynamic we see in the Bible is, as the Bible's taught in the power of the Spirit, God speaks into hearts and minds and transforms. Well, I have nothing worth saying, but God has got wonderful things to say to us. And we need to hear his voice. So therefore, my job on a Sunday and during the week is to help us unhear what God is saying in the Bible. As part of this conviction of teaching everything, I'm convinced that central to our diet as a church is that we just work through books of the Bible, teaching each chapter as they come. It stops me avoiding the bits I don't like, or that I think you might not like. It makes sure we get everything. The good bits, uh, the bits that I like, the bits that are hard, and the bits that are challenging. There is a place for thematic teaching and doctrinal teaching. We did that with our series on prayer. But as a heart, we want to have just working through books of the Bible, as our central diet for teaching in the life of the church. And one final comment on this, just in relation to our children and youth work. See, what is true for adults must also be true for children. What are we doing when we have Sunday club? What are we doing when we have a holiday club? What will we be doing when we employ, God willing, this families and community worker? Well, we want to make disciples. We're not just the running Sunday club so children have something to do on a Sunday morning. We're running Sunday club because we want to make disciples. And Jesus' commission reminds us that we want to make disciples of every child we can. And a key element to that is teaching them. It's why Bible teaching needs to be at the centre of our Sunday club teaching and what we do on a holiday club. Because that's what Jesus calls us to do, to make disciples and to teach them. And how important is it we do that with our children and our young people? Uh, any child coming to Christian faith is a gift of the grace of God. We need to pray for his grace in all their lives. Let us be those who pray that our children might grow up 
so that when they get to 17, 18, they are sold out for Jesus Christ. I want you to be one of his disciples. And to do that, we need to teach them. And we need to make that central to what we're doing. So here we have Jesus' great commission. Go and make disciples, followers of his, of every nation. We're to baptise. We're to teach them to obey. Now oh, that task feels very daunting. <laughs> Certainly feels very daunting to me. And therefore verse 20 is a wonderful reassurance. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Jesus said earlier in this gospel that he will build his church. And from that I have wonderful confidence that as we pray and trust God, he will be with us as we get on with this task of the Great Commission. Wonderfully summarised in our vision of helping local people follow Jesus Christ. Friends, I'm committed to that. Let's be committed to that together for the glory of God. Let's pray. Dear Father, we thank you for reminding us of this great commission, this mission which used to be central to our life as a church. And so, Father, we ask for St Matthews, that we together will be committed to going and making disciples. Disciples of everyone who lives in our parish, in East Sussex and of the world. That we'll be committed to baptising them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And committed to this ministry of teaching. That we'll be asking people to obey all that Jesus has commanded. We thank you for that promise that you will be with us as we get on with the task you've given us. So please equip us by your Spirit. Please speak to us through your word and help us live for you. For the glory of Jesus Christ. 